The Navy SEALs, a clandestine group that has transformed into one of the most elite forces in the world over time. The evolutionary process of the U.S. Navy SEALs begins during World War II at amphibious training base Little Creek, Norfolk, Virginia. Starting in late August 1942, two special mission units were formed. These units were known as Amphibious Scouts and Raiders and Special Mission Naval Demolition Unit. SNR was a team of enlisted sailors and Army infantry used for reconnaissance missions, and the Special Mission Naval Demolition Unit was a group of Navy salvage divers. Launched in November of 1942 off the coast of French Morocco in North Africa, these groups were responsible for reconnaissance and the removal of cable booms during Operation Torch. SNR teams performed other operations, such as guiding ships and small crafts under withering fire. Their legacy capabilities are now carried out by today's SWIC operators. By May 6, 1943, the Chief of Naval Operations directed the Naval Demolition Project, a two-phase project which would include the initial plans for future Naval Combat Demolition Units, or NCDUs. As plans for a massive cross-channel invasion of Europe began, Lieutenant Commander Draper Kaufman was directed to establish a school to train specialized units to eliminate obstacles on enemy-held beaches. On June 6, 1943, the NCDU Training School was established in Fort Pierce, Florida, and in September of 1943, the first NCDU class graduated after several months of arduous training. In the end, a total of 24 NCDUs would be in England in preparation for D-Day. June 6, 1944, D-Day. The NCDUs at Omaha Beach and Utah Beach were able to penetrate German defenses. 37 were killed and 71 wounded, making D-Day the bloodiest single day in the history of naval special warfare. However, none of the casualties were due to improper handling of explosives, an important fact in Navy SEAL history. In the Pacific Campaign, many of the early Fort Pierce trained NCDUs were deployed. Known as MacArthur's Frogmen, these units operated primarily in the Southwest Pacific. Other units, such as Special Services Unit 1 and the Sino-American Cooperative Organization, branches of SNR, also operated in the Pacific. On November 22, 1943, during the Tarawa Landing, hundreds of Marines died from enemy fire and drowning due to hitting a submerged reef that was mistaken for land. Due to the horrific events, Admiral Kelly Turner, commander of the 5th Amphibious Force, directed that 30 officers and 150 enlisted men be moved to Waimanalo Amphibious Training Base. It was here that the UDTs of the Pacific were born. Between December 1944 and August 1945, UDT men operated in every major amphibious landing. Yet as quickly as the UDTs were formed during World War II, they were just as quickly disbanded. This is war. UDTs would not be called on again until 1950 during the height of the Korean War. At this time, UDT men were responsible for marking low points in the channel, clearing foul propellers, and searching for landmines. UDTs also conducted beach and river reconnaissance and infiltrated guerrillas behind the lines from sea. Navy frogmen conducted the first UDT raid of the Korean War, as well as the first combat dive using an aqualung. Their last operation would be Operation Fishnet, responsible for crippling North Korea's food supplies by destroying its fishing nets. During the post-Korean War period, President Eisenhower addressed small conflicts involving U.S. interests using specialized forces such as UDT, Green Beret Special Forces, and Force Reconnaissance Units. Unconventional warfare became a growing need in 1960 during the crises in Laos and Cuba. Thus, in 1961, Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Arlie A. Burke directed the OPNAV staff to organize new or existing Navy units for smaller conflicts. Admiral Wallace M. Beakley addressed a memo to the CNO that proposed a detailed mission and task statement for SEAL teams. Finally, on March 25, 1961, President Kennedy addressed Congress to establish unconventional warfare units in response to urgent national needs. Two SEAL teams were officially authorized by December 1961, and both units were established in January 1962. Their mission? Conduct unconventional warfare, counter guerrilla warfare, and clandestine operations. It was at that moment the Navy SEALs as we know them were born.